Hey there, it's Cindy again. Welcome back. We are working in module four. We're talking about customers and jobs. This is actually video number seven where I wanna introduce you to how to invoice from estimates. If you do not create estimates in your business, then you can skip 4-7 and 4-8 and just go right down to 4-9 and just start with invoicing customers for products and services. But let's talk about how to take your estimates and turn them into invoices. Let's flip over to QuickBooks and we will go ahead and get started. Now that you've created an estimate for your customer, you'll want to go ahead and pull some of those items onto an invoice. That way you can send the invoice out and get paid for some of that hard work you've been doing. Before we do that, we're going to be talking about progress invoicing as we go through and create this invoice. And I wanna make sure again that you know where that option is in case it's not turned on. If you go back to edit on your menu and come down to preferences, you wanna make sure on the left here that you're clicked on jobs and estimates, company preferences tab, and make sure you've chosen yes for the option that says, do you do progress invoicing? This is what's gonna allow you to pull items from that estimate onto an invoice. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay because that looks okay and let's get started. I'm going to choose create invoices. The first thing I wanna point out is if you have this gray bar, you can click this arrow to show the history. This may be on already and you want to actually hide the history by clicking on this arrow. That will give you more room to work with on your screen. The history will just give you the recent transactions, any notes, customer payments, things like that, that you may wanna see as you're creating this invoice. We're gonna go ahead and hide that for now. And notice the first thing that QuickBooks wants to know is who is my customer and my job that I'm actually creating an invoice for? I'm going to choose Tom Allen's Sunroom. Now you have a list of available estimates. These are estimates that you've created for Tom Allen's Sunroom and you haven't pulled everything onto an invoice yet. If this window doesn't pop up, the first thing I would do is check your estimate to see if you have the exact same customer and job. If I created the estimate originally and I just had Tom Allen and not the Sunroom, but here I chose the Sunroom, there's not gonna be an exact match so this window won't pop up. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the estimate I'd like to pull from and then click OK. And now you see the progress invoicing window. This is what I wanted to make sure was turned on over in the preferences. Here I have three choices. I can go ahead and pull everything on the estimate onto this invoice, that would be the first one. The next thing I could do is create an invoice for a percentage. If I wanted to create an invoice for 30%, I would just type in the 30. It will let you put the percent sign in, that's okay, but it does know it's a percentage. And then the third option at the bottom, notice is where you would create an invoice for selected items. I'm going to show you how that one works. I'll just click on okay. And here you'll see each item that you had actually pulled onto your estimate. You can also see the quantity and all the information about each one. If you want to pull over three of the hours of framing, you would just type that in the quantity area. And then here, let's say I pull over one of the wood doors. You could also go in and put in the percentages if you prefer to do that. I'm gonna click okay. And now you can see that it pulled in those quantities that I just told it I wanted to pull over. If you wanted to add something to this, just click on the next line down and type it in. You can add as many items as you want to. Maybe there's a freight charge that you wanna get reimbursed for. They actually already have an item set up called freight reimbursement here. I'm just gonna say there's a quantity of one of these and I'll just make up an amount, 193.26, and you can see it tracks all of that. You can see at the bottom here that the sales tax that I'm using is San Thomas and the tax it's charging is $84.51. You can see the total. If there were payments applied, you would see that here. You wouldn't see any payments applied until you've saved this and then recorded a payment and then opened this back up. That's when you will see any payments have been applied. And of course, there's the balances due right down at the bottom. Over on the left-hand side, you can see there's a place for a customer message. They have a few of these already set up, but if you wanted to add a new one, you would just choose add new and type that in. 
I'll just choose this one here that says, please sign and date this proposal. There's a place for a memo below that, and no one will see this memo except you. It's not going to print out on your invoice. There's also a place for the customer tax code. This just means this customer is subject to sales tax. A couple of things at the top I wanna to go over real quick. If you're using the class feature, make sure that you choose the correct class. You wanna use that consistently if you're going to use it so that your reports are accurate. There's also a place for the template that you wanna use for this invoice. We're gonna cover templates in a later module. Here's the date of your invoice. I'm going to change this to December 27th. The invoice number is populated automatically. You can change that if you'd like and double check that your billing information is correct for your customer. This customer has terms of net 30. I can change that if I like. You can see that if I choose net 15 as an example, that this due date reflects 15 days from this date right here. When you're finished, just go ahead and save and close if you're finished, or if you want to create another one, you can choose save and new. I'm going to save and close for now. And you'll notice that I changed the terms over here. And this is asking me, do I want QuickBooks to change those terms permanently in the customer's record? I'll go ahead and say yes for now. And that invoice has now been completed. Let's go ahead and move over now to part two. That's gonna be video number 4-8. And we'll continue and talk about some of the options you have when you're creating that invoice. Simon Says, subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. Hey there, it's Cindy again. Welcome back. We just wrapped up invoicing from estimates part one. We actually went through and created an invoice based on an estimate. What I want to do now is go ahead and take you into part two. We're going to complete another invoice based on that estimate, and then we'll go over some of the options you have available when you're working with that invoice you've created. Let's go ahead and flip over to QuickBooks and we will continue with part two. I wanna head back to the customer center. I still have it open on the left, just to show you that we do have our estimate and then we have one invoice we created. What I want to do now is go ahead and create an invoice for whatever was left on that estimate because we've completed that job. And we'll just follow the same process. I'm going to go back to the home screen and choose Create Invoices. The first thing I want to do is pick my customer and my job. I'm going to pick Tom Allen's sunroom. It does tell me I have some available estimates. As long as you have even one penny left on that estimate, this window will pop up. You won't get this window for this customer and job once you've pulled everything from that estimate. But I'll go ahead and choose the estimate I'd like to pull from and click OK. And now I get my progress invoicing window again. One thing that's a little bit different from the first time we saw this is notice the first option now says, create an invoice for the remaining amounts of the estimate, which is what I'm going to do. But I could choose another percentage or if I want to pick selected items like we did with the first one, I could do that as well. I'm going to click OK here and you can see that it pulled in whatever was left on that estimate that had not yet been invoiced. I'm just going to double check some of the options on the screen. I want to change the date. In this case, I'll say that it's January the 9th. Notice it does give me the next invoice number. My bill to information is correct. You wanna make sure you check the terms and the due date. If you want to add anything to this, remember just click on the next line down and you can add anything you'd like to this invoice. You do have at the bottom your sales tax, your payment supplied, your balance due. We talked about all of that. Once you're finished, you can go ahead and save and close or save and new if you want to create a new one. Before I save and close, I want to go through some of the options that you have up under your tabs at the top of your window. These are options that pertain to this invoice. You're probably going to stay on the main tab most of the time and some of these options you'll already be familiar with because you saw them when we actually created the estimate. But let's go back through these. The first thing you'll notice is you have the option to find. 
If you're looking for an invoice and you just can't find it using these arrows that go left or right, go ahead and click on the Find option, and that way you can put in some search criteria and have QuickBooks search for you. Your next option is your New button. This allows you to create a new blank invoice. Remember, this is the exact same as coming down to the bottom of your screen and choosing Save and New. You do have the option to save this invoice. If it's taking a while and you have a lot of line items, you might want to save it at various points. Notice also that you can save this as a PDF just by clicking that down arrow. The next thing you'll see is the delete option. This is how you're going to delete this invoice. Notice when I click the down arrow, I also have an option to just void it. If I delete it, it's going to be gone, but if I void it, it will stay in QuickBooks and it will just say void across it with a zero balance. If I wanted to create a copy of this, I could. I could also memorize this, and we'll talk about memorizing in a later module. Also, mark it as pending. Remember, if you mark something as pending, it's going to be in QuickBooks, but QuickBooks will not count it in your numbers. It could be that you set this up a little bit early and maybe you're not quite ready to send it out, but you don't want to delete it. You could leave it in here and that way it's not part of your accounts receivable. You do have the option to print this. I wanna show you a preview of what your invoices look like. I'll just click anywhere to zoom in a little bit. You can see that it has your company name and your address. You will want to customize this a little bit so that you have some more information here, possibly the telephone number, the email address. You'll notice over on the right it says invoice. There's a place for the date and the invoice number, and then all of the information that's on that invoice. Remember, you can customize this, like I mentioned, and we'll do that in a later module. I'm going to hit the close button at the top, and that'll take me back. Now underneath print, there are a few other options. Here's where you can actually print that invoice out or print a batch. And what a batch means is, if you notice there's a checkbox here that says print later, if you've got several invoices created, the ones that have the check mark, if you choose the batch option, those will be printed. If you're going to be shipping items, here's where you can create a packing slip, a shipping label, or an envelope. These will do mail merges with Microsoft Word. And then notice you can also save this as a PDF file. You have the ability to email your forms in QuickBooks. If you wanted to email this invoice to your customer, you could just choose invoice here and that would let you email it. If you want to email the batch, all the ones that have the check mark that say email later would be included in that batch. Here you can attach a file. You might have some file that you've scanned in, or it's a file that you can access in your computer and actually attach to this. So that way you don't have to go out of QuickBooks and search for those files and open them up. They're right here. You do have an option to add your time and your cost. We'll actually talk about this over in the next video, which is video number nine, invoicing customers for products and services. So we'll hold that. And you can also apply credits. We'll hold that one as well and talk about those in the next video. And just to tell you what progress means, if you wanted to see a timeline of, I've estimated this job, I created an invoice, I received a payment, that would show you the progress. And you could see the progress too as to how much you've actually pulled from that estimate. Here's a way to receive a payment against this invoice. Chances are you're not going to be on this screen when you want to receive a payment, but you can do that. You can also create a batch. What that basically does is takes one invoice and allows you to send it to multiple customers. Maybe if you have three customers that are each going to pay a third, then you'd be able to send this to all three. And there's also a place for a refund or credit, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in this module as well. I just wanted you to be familiar with those options because that's where you're going to find most of the things you'll use on a daily basis. We'll look at some of these other tabs when we get over into the next video as well. I just wanted to make sure here that you know how to actually pull all of the information from your estimates onto invoices. Once you're finished, go ahead and save and close. 
And that's how you're going to create your invoices based on estimates. Let's go ahead now and move over to video nine in this module and talk about invoicing customers for products and services. This video is part of our full QuickBooks 2022 course. To take a look at the course, click over there. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And to see more QuickBooks 2022 videos, click over there.